Vertical farming, the technology that was promised to change the world by solving humanity's food problems using high-end technology. You've probably heard of it. If so, you might have also read about some of the scathing articles talking about the huge issues that vertical farming startups have been facing in the recent years. Ranging from incompetent management to outright bad luck, the vertical farming industry has seen its share of problems. Vertical farming promises a revolution in agriculture, but why are so many startups failing despite the high-tech hype? From over-investments to poor crop choices, let's delve into critical mistakes plaguing this promising industry. So the first mistake that we see vertical farming startups making to this day, regardless of how many bankruptcies we've seen, is not learning enough about their customers' preferences, behaviors, and expectations before launching a new, super expensive automated indoor farm. In fact, way too many vertical farming entrepreneurs fall into the trap of overlooking customer insights in favor of developing their technology and internal operations. This disconnect can lead to misaligned product offerings, missed market opportunities, and diminished customer loyalty. For example, a lot of vertical farms were initially targeting large supermarkets and wholesale suppliers while having zero experience or understanding of how such customers work and what kind of operating procedures they are expecting of you. Setting up your farm first and contacting customers second is often a recipe for a disaster. Building a customer-centric approach begins with actively engaging with target audiences to gather feedback and insights. By learning what kind of preferences and pain points the customers have, vertical farming founders can tailor their services to meet specific market demands, building unique competitive advantages along the way. The next mistake that we've seen a lot of vertical farming startups make even to this day is operating based on completely unrealistic growth and profitability expectations. While ambitious goals can indeed inspire innovation and drive performance, unrealistic expectations can lead to disappointment, financial pressure, and operational instability. Future vertical farming companies must strike a balance between aspiration and pragmatism, aligning growth projections with market conditions and operational capabilities. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but let's just reiterate, vertical farming founders have to keep in mind that scaling vertical farms is not like scaling software business, where the cost of delivering a product to a new customer is close to zero. With vertical farming, scaling to new markets or even to new crops require significant capital investments with long payback periods and they include significant risk because once you've set up a new farm it's pretty darn hard to get rid of it or to even move it to another location. If vertical farming founders want to succeed in the long term it's essential that they conduct rigorous market analysis, financial modeling and risk assessment to forecast growth realistically while also setting realistic timelines for product development. This also includes rigorous testing before new products are launched. Fun fact, a story that I've heard from one failed vertical farm was that the sales staff of that company was pushed to sell a new type of exotic product to their customers that the company's biology team had never even tested before. Basically, this means that the sales guys would actually sign contracts with their customers to grow new products and only after that they would go to their biologist telling about this to which the biologist would have to reply, we have no idea how to grow this product that you've already sold. So as you can see, this type of a fake it until you make it culture doesn't really work in this industry. Instead, by adopting a phased approach to growth and profitability, farms can avoid a situation where they overpromise and underdeliver, reducing stakeholder trust in not only them, but the entire industry as well. By doing this, the industry as a whole can finally start rebuilding some of the trust that was lost when some of these previously mentioned industry darlings overpromised and failed miserably. Anyways, the third mistake that we've seen happening a lot is vertical farming founders building their businesses in a way that focuses on raising more investor money over building a great business. In fact, a lot of vertical farmers that went bankrupt during the past few years kind of got trapped in the idea that they can just keep raising more and more money from investors without really having to care too much about profitability. And I know you could say, Oliver, this is not a unique idea to vertical farms, to which I would reply, fair enough. This was actually quite common when the interest rates were low because investors were just 
pouring money into startups, pushing their founders to maximize market share, no matter the cost, with the goal of establishing a dominant position in the market before others. Having said this, vertical farming simply is not software that can be scaled indefinitely without issues. While securing funding is essential for growth and expansion, farms should have prioritized building a robust business foundation and delivering tangible value to their customers. Effective business development as a vertical farming founder should start with identifying and addressing validated market needs and by making sure that your product fits that need. After this, your focus should be on nurturing customer relationships, not only to increase your long-term revenue, but also to make sure that you make yourself as irreplaceable in the production chain as possible. Otherwise, the second that the markets turn and the situation gets a bit more difficult, you will be replaced by more conventional agricultural products. So by focusing on creating actual value and solving real-world challenges, vertical farms should be able to attract patient capital investors who align with the vertical farm team's long-term vision and growth strategy instead of you know just being there to support the founders investor negotiations so moving on the next huge mistake that vertical farms do and to be honest this is something that really pisses me off is trying to greenwash the technology to high heavens so greenwashing or the practice of exaggerating or misrepresenting a business's environmental benefits has been a incredible massive issue within the vertical farming industry for the past five-ish years. Historically speaking, startups in this industry have made just absolutely outrageous claims about vertical farming and its environmental impact, especially when compared to conventional farming. By promoting exaggerated claims about vertical farming's environmental impact, the industry's genuine contributions to sustainability practices have become completely obscured. I recently spoke with Henry Gordon Smith from Agritecture, about this topic and he put this problem quite nicely. But I think one of the key problems is that people are trying to find a panacea out of vertical farming. You know, mm. this listing of all the benefits make it seem like this utopian technology and it's an incredible technology. You can mm. save land, you can save water, you can grow year round, you can grow a better product, you can eliminate pesticides, but people feel, feel the need to add even more benefits to make it even more superior and put it in contrast to outdoor agriculture or greenhouses. Hmm. When instead vertical farming in reality for the near future is a, a small component of the transition to a more sustainable food system. We need to invest in it, we need to discover, we need to figure out where it works and how, but it is not a replacement for outdoor agriculture, it is not a replacement for greenhouses. It should be a complement to the food system and essentially a pretty small piece of that. And I think mm -hmm. that we're starting to see a little bit more hybridization, which gives, gives me some hope, meaning mm -hmm. that we're combining vertical farms with greenhouses. But in general, you know, the incentive continues to be money. And where, right. where there's an incentive to exaggerate and where there's incentive to even sometimes lie, um, mm. you know, we're not really going to learn from these mistakes. All right, so what can new vertical farming founders do about this? Well, as Henry puts it, it's imperative for farms to substantiate their claims with empirical data, independent certifications, and transparent reporting practices. By adopting rigorous standards for environmental reporting and operational transparency, farms can differentiate themselves as responsible industry leaders committed to driving positive change. Even more importantly, educating stakeholders, including consumers, investors, and policymakers about the realities and the challenges of vertical farming, in my opinion, is essential if this industry wants to ever prosper. And that's kind of what we're trying to do here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to see more videos about vertical farming. Also, this video covers even more ludicrous mistakes that a lot of vertical farming companies have been making, so check it out.